day. Good day. And don't panic, for it is I, Braggy. And I'm Egil, Egil Thorson. And we are, of course, a pair of Vikings, as you can tell from the way we dress. Now, what are we here for today, Egil? You took the words right out of my mouth. Yes, I was thinking Something that. Something to do with the postal. Arrival. It's called Egil. This yeah. is an educating Egil here. It's called Ooh. an unboxing video. Ooh, the ceremony of the unboxing. So, yes, folks, this is another unboxing video. We have gone and brought something, spent some more money. And you're going to need this. And well, we are going to need a knife, but not quite now. Oh, in a minute. Right. So, sit down, grab a nice hot drink. I did. And this will be in two parts. Like the second part of the video is where we'll be trying this item out. I'm not saying what it is at the moment. Alright. So, so, what do you think it is, Eggle? Let's see, let's test Eggle. It could be anything. Is it, uh, is it a sword? Is no. Is it a helmet? No. You is can wear it, it. pair of trousers? Not a pair of trousers. Or breeches. A tunic? It's like a tunic. A coat. Oh, let's get the box out. Alright. Oh, now you want me knife, don't you? Eh? Yes, I do want your knife no, now. I want it now. Ah! Uh, just to take this off. Hang on. Hang on, folks. We will be with you. So this is the box in question. Now, talk about the box, Egil, because you felt the weight of this box already, haven't you? Yeah, it's quite heavy and it's a turquoise, or turquoise, depending on where you're from. I'll tell you what, unboxing things and wings don't go together. No, that's true. Um, what I'm doing at the moment is just removing my address. Oh, I thought that was the receipt. I was going to say you're in trouble there, man. There we go. We do this for reasons of... We are professionals at unboxing things. Oh. Yeah, just put it on the floor, man. That's what floors are for. Then somebody comes along and sweeps it up with a broom or a brom. A broom. Yeah, that comes from brushwood, you know. Really? From ancient uh, Germanic, uh, Proto Germanic. Well, I know that um, the besom, as we call it now, my dad used to make them occasionally. Oh, did he? Yeah. About the only thing he and did. If he was going to make a broom, mm. what tips would you have? I don't know because I never saw him do it, but he appeared with one that he'd made. He'd wrapped it round with wire and it, did, it was to clean the woodshed. But the sign of ale was to stick a besom in the gable end. You're definitely going to have to sharpen this nice. It's about as blunt as a spoon. Yeah, I know, but it does the trick. You know, well, it, because it's not been in my hands, it's not been sharpened yet. It's just as well because it nearly had my fingers off when he took it off me. You know, well, there's there's a quick way of handing a knife. Did we do that right? I don't know. I'm sure it's not meant to take your fingers off. Well, you know, it could have been worse. Could my it? dad would have said it could have been me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Honestly, another five we could have got. Uh, what's his name? No, he's Bill not alive Bailey. no more. Bill Bailey. Ah. Bill Bailey. Oh, ah, yeah. ah, I like Bill Bailey. Yeah, I do. That's why I mentioned him. Ah. If you're listening in, Bill. Keep it up, mate. Do you think Bill Bailey's ever done an unboxing video? Nothing would surprise me with Bill Bailey. He's a very accomplished musician, I know that. He's, uh, he says Runa Egger. Ah, very nice, that. Mm. Um, right, you take your knife carefully. Mind yeah. your fingers. Um, that was. Um, I think... Right, we, we might need your knife again. <laughs> oh, the way the plan comes together. Um, it hasn't yet. So I take the you take away. the box out of the way. No, we, don't, we don't need the box. Okay, Jeffrey. <laughs> oh, look, it's Egg or the box. Yeah. That's another impression. What was that? Uh, it's got files. Oh. Right, got to very carefully now unwrap this. Otherwise, he's going to have a sleeveless jacket. Yes. Well, yes. Yeah. Well, I doubt it with that knife. But it's, it's not bad. It's, but. I don't think you, you know you're going to cook yourself on it. Sharp. It's usually used for eating. Right? I'll, I'll offer you my free sharpening services if you like. All oh, right. But bear in mind, when I sharpen something, they're generally fairly, fairly sharp. I have to do my kitchen knives. I've actually got a kitchen knife sharpener. You can just put your knife in like that. All oh, right. I've got some really nice knives, but I'm not very good at sharpening. It makes you think, there you are, you know, there's old Eggle, you know. Old Eggle? So, as a Viking, you would be old. Mm. You're living on your farmstead, and your knife's a bit blunt. So, how would you sharpen the knife? Whetstones. It's mentioned in the sagas. 
ah. because it's bad manners to hand a whetstone over the table. You have to go round it clockwise. Oh. And Thor has a lump of whetstone stuck in his head. Does he? Yeah. Is he a bit like that dwarf in, in The Hobbit with an axe in his head? I don't know, but he was, um, the witch was charming and his stone out and for some reason he got interrupted and he's still there. Now we are getting closer. We start to see it. Oh, should it have black lace on it? No, that's the wrong person. All right, sorry. So here we are. Well, that was a leather skirt. I'll let you pull that out. <laughs> and I'll then let you Thank have you. your knife. Should it have better sea swimming baths on it? And we're going to slowly unwrap this. And then the next part, we'll try it on. Ooh, so this is a, a wool calf can. Coat. Oh, it's a coat. Yeah. Yeah. So, a bit like a Jimi Hendrix coat. It is like a Jimi Hendrix coat, but it doesn't have the straight fold in the middle. It's got the one where it folds over, so it's more Eastern Viking, even mm. more Eastern. And it's a nice herringbone wool. Make a nice dressing gown, that would. It would make it make it make you a very nice smoking jacket. Oh, yeah, really? a nice study. Yeah. Uh, I mean, that's nice. Do you want to talk about the wool? Yeah, that's a nice. It's obviously for a Bondi and above because of the colour. Indigo, of course. Yes. There was a uh, trade with India, despite what other people said. Um, it's been mostly machine sewn and hand finished, yeah. which I think is acceptable these days. I mean, I, mean, I might do some of that. How far do you go? Do you end up having fleas and uh, dysentery and God but, knows what? Now, I, I didn't get this on eBay, not advertising them. I got this on a Facebook group. Right. So at some point, I think we'll all make another video hmm. on talking about buying kit online. Yeah. I mean, we know what we're doing, so when we see an item, we know straight away whether that item's correct, whether it's hmm. going to be acceptable to wear, if you see what I mean. It depends, horses, of course. If you're in a reenactment group, yes, you want it exactly right. But if it's for your own fun... But of course you could be a LARPer, which is far more easier going and you can get away with a lot more kit. Because there are lots of yeah. LARP Vikings out there. Yeah, it's a pity they don't fight with proper weapons. But there we go. I know. Before we go to the next part, I just told you a little story about when we were training at the park some years back. And we used to train on a Sunday, didn't we, Eggle? Yeah. Um, on the park where we used to train, a lot of LARPers used to train. And one day we were there in the wood fighting and some LARPers walked past and one of them turned round and said to us and said, oh look at them they've got steel weapons oh yeah yeah have you ever actually used a lot of weapon no i haven't i avoid it like the yeah. plague it's it just strikes me i mean let's not take it too seriously what we do oh no but at the same time no it's not going to be much fun eating each other with a... Well, with it's a whatever, whatever flex your back, yeah. of course. But, I mean, you've got to give it to the, you know, to the amount of time they put into making yeah. the weapons and whatnot. But, yeah. Anyway, so we're going to come back in a minute, standing up. Mm. And we'll, we'll then talk about the jacket a bit more and give you a closer look. Mm. A closer look. look at it, yes. It's some days when you're talking camera, you just can't get your words right, can you, Eggle? Blue with the honey. Oh, yeah, I got that. Yeah. Yeah. So, hang on. We'll be back. So we're back. So hello again, and thank Hi. you for hanging about. So now we can have a proper look at this nice coat. So <coughs> what do you think, Eggle? I think that's uh, pretty fetching. It's nice colour blue there. Oh, lovely. It's actually, I know that sounded too weird. It's a nice combination of colours. You've got the light blue, the dark blue and the green. And they've done it just right, in my view. It's a bit heavy, though. It is heavy. Well, I think that just shows you the quality of the weight of I'm, the wool. I'm assuming underneath that you just wear an ordinary shirt. Yeah, you, so underneath this you'd have an under tunic, mm. maybe a pot one like I'm wearing, or a plain one. Oh, that's just like and that. let's try it on. Go on then. I mean, whether this will be too big for me, but if it's too big for me, then everyone can use it on camera. Well, also you could use it as an overcoat. Well, of course you can. If you're if you're thinking there you are in winter, mm. you know you're going to be wanting to wrap yourself up warm. So that looks all right. Yeah, it's a bit big on you, but I mean, as an overcoat, that's as an overcoat, that's yeah. fine. Yeah. But now we've got three eastern jackets with yeah. two straights, uh, seaming front ones, and this one. So I think let's try it on you, but I think okay. it looks better on you. All right. But this will also give us the ability to make one now, because I better get a pattern out of this. I better figure it out. So there you go, dressing eggle. This one. Oh, 
I'm like your servant there, Eggle. Well, class will out. Here we go. We just wrap that there and that there. Yeah, then you put a boat on it. Yeah. Well, I'll right, just hold it. it there, yeah. I'll suit dark colours. I mean, you'd, right you'd, you'd be spending £40 at least on the wall for yeah. this, so I think that's very good. I mean, so. you can also. Yeah. I do that a lot with uh, when I've got my heating on. Oh, yeah. You see what the Chinese mandarins used to do. It does actually keep the body heat in. It's more efficient than gloves because you've got your body heat that's constant. And I find after a while, gloves, my hands get cold. And well, why is this a kind of a, a, a pattern of a, a clothing which you wouldn't see often? No. Because it's, it's more Eastern. It'd be sort of like the Rus and maybe even the people out in Midgard. You know, Constantinople. It's an Eastern style. Yeah. And it's. So if you're part of the the, mm. the uh, ringing guard. That's what I was thinking. Yeah. 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 But I mean, you know, having a, an undershirt, ordinary breeches, and this on top. I mean, night time it gets cold out in the for east. Plus, I'm also thinking that it's a very simple jacket for you to put on in, in the in the to yeah. do you know to make you look different yeah. as well. So, I think oh. that's an excellent buy for yeah, the channel. Yeah, well done. I don't know where you got it from, but whoever made it. There's a man called Callum, so thank you very much, okay, Callum. Callum. I think you've done a marvellous job sewing that. That's fantastic. I could have done a better job myself. And I just love your choice of colours. I think it's been lovely. And to be honest, this guy's pretty hot with a needle. Yeah, um, nice that is. But that is really nice, so thanks, Callum. And, uh, and if I get a chance, we'll put some photographs at the end for mm. you. If I'd, I'd take some little yeah. close-up details. Well, I mean, because I know you guys like to see yeah. this sort of a thing. Well, I mean, it's it also highlights it for us. I mean, this hand stitching on. Yeah, well, this is the hand finishing mm. section of it. Mm. There's always a, a good amount of hand stitching to be done. Uh, to be honest, I don't think it can be too precious about it being done mm. on a machine. No. Why not? I mean, uh, life's too short. But stuff. If, if you're starting out the hobby. Yeah. And you know, you're know you looking at making your own clothing for the first time, then hand sewing something is very daunting, mm. plus very time consuming. So yeah. just sewing up your item quickly on the sewing machine and hand sewing, mm. the finishing off. That would pass that's fine. Stuff, it? Oh yeah. yeah, no problem. So there you go, another unboxing video. We hope you enjoyed that. Mm. We are planning to buy some more things from various sellers from Etsy. So watch out for those videos and we will do some more unboxing videos for you guys if that is what you want. Yeah, let us know. And I think we're going to have an, a hashtag, mm -hmm. Unboxing Viking. Yeah. So if you like it, leave that hashtag in the comment, folks. Or press the subscription bell. Well, if you're new, mm. but also check that you're not being unsubscribed because that can happen on YouTube sometimes. Right, yeah. If you're not watched the channel for a while, YouTube can unsubscribe you. Right. So make sure that you are subscribed and if you are new, then click the subscription bar and then click the bell. By clicking the bell, what happens Eggle, is that they get notified from mm. YouTube when we publish our videos and when we very rarely premiere and when we very rarely live stream. Just goes to show, doesn't it? And so it's. I think it's goodbye from me. And it's goodbye from me. Goodbye, what's hail? It thank you, Steve. I thank you. See ya.